Welcome to Trent's DIY Adventures. Today's video, I'm gonna kind of walk you through how we, not so much boondock, but uh, remote camp. We're out here at the Boulder Park Campground in the Bighorns, um, outside of Ten Sleep, Wyoming. And it's uh, a rugged camp, uh, no water, no hookups, no electricity, that kind of stuff. So kind of show you how we set up camp, uh, what we do for our power solutions and, and that kind of stuff. So let's get into it. Give you a little tour of our, our campsite, as you can see. Rugged, nice mountain area. We're up, you know, 8,500, 9,000 feet. Um, have a 20, 2018 24 RKPR. It's a rear kitchen with uh, dual slide outs on opposing sides. Um, Tone it with a three quarter ton F-250 gasser. We're weekend warriors, not full timers, but I'll kind of show you what we've got set up. And it's a nice campground. Um, pads are fairly level. And again, sun's sleeping, so I'll try and be a little bit quiet. But, you know, it's got a nice pad, fire pit. Um, as long as they approve campfires, you can have a campfire in, um, in the pit. We have a shepherd's hook here that we normally have a trash bag on, but since we're not out here, um, there is a bear warning. Uh, so we don't have that. They have another pole here that you can hang, lanterns. Um, they provide the picnic table, but uh, we've got a fold-out camp table. This is becoming one of my newer friends. I, I'm really enjoying this uh, Camp Chef uh, twin burner stove. We had it at home using it for our canning and I decided to get some accessories for it, use it for camping so we're not using um, the inside kitchen when it's gorgeous outside like it is here and our camper does not have an outside kitchen it does have the outside barbecue but I'll kind of show you why I don't like that but uh, got the old uh, flap top griddle um, got a barbecue box down there uh, for grilling burgers and that kind of stuff comes with a grease strip cast iron skillets on the stove um, I'll do a full review of this later on but uh, for the most part I really love this setup. We've got a nice hot table here, but if you didn't have that, that's what the uh, fold-out table's for. But this uh, nice little flat top would work great for uh, Dutch ovens and hot skillets and that kind of stuff, food prep, kind of nice. And then I have my Dutch oven table, um, another camp chef uh, setup, but uh, just a lodge, um, lodge 10 inch. Uh, deep uh, Dutch oven with all the accessories. The only thing I don't like about this table is, you know, the, the ash and stuff from the briquettes kind of piles up. I'm thinking about maybe uh, getting the cutting wheel out and doing a little bit, uh, some slots in the table for, um, so that I can brush the ash down through the table without having to tear it all down. The table comes with one of these um, windshields. I robbed the other one from the two burner stove. Kind of adds an extra windbreak. Kind of keeps the uh, temperature control for the uh, briquettes fairly well. As I mentioned, I really like the two burner camp stove um, just because our outdoor quote unquote kitchen, which was really just a barbecue grill that mounted onto this bumper bracket and hooks up to the, there's a propane disconnect underneath the bumper. So um, the grill was okay for cooking burgers and. Um, hot dogs and that kind of stuff, but that's about all it was good for. And this bracket, when it swings out, it actually tilted off to one angle, so your food was almost rolling off the grill. Um, we're having to find sticks or find something to prop up the other end. Um, really just didn't like that setup. So we really haven't ever used it, used it once, and then we've kind of stopped using it. So I might actually take this bracket off and, and do something else with uh, the space. Okay, for power management, um, for extra charging the batteries and having to run microwave, um, if it gets really hot up here, which it's not, it's you know 75, 80 degrees up here, so cool breeze, stays pretty nice up here, but uh, if we end up having to run the AC, but if we need, uh, my wife needs coffee in the morning, um, or we need to run the microwave, we've got the power generator, or if our solar setup doesn't hold it up, keep up with the uh, battery charging we can run the generator to, to charge up the batteries um, but it's just a champion 4,000 watt uh, or 3,500 running watt uh, 
generator. I've got the surge protector hooked up to it with the power cord going to it. And I'll show you our, our setup. And this is my Renault G 100 watt uh, solar panel, suitcase style where it folds in half, tucks up nicely in there. And then I can drape, have about 30 feet of um, cord going from the solar panel to directly to the batteries. Uh, that way, if I need to move the solar panel around to where the sun shines, I've got plenty of cord to get around to it. And then we run two six volt uh, US batteries, US 2200 batteries. Gets us about 200 um, um, amp hours when they're fully charged. And I do have the single point watering system hooked up to it. Um, so that way, you know, a couple times throughout the year, I just hook up the distilled bottle, the pump to this end here and uh, pump it up with some distilled water. And do have batteries shut off and some bus bars back there for cord storage. So what I do for our, our power source, uh, this is your main 30 amp cord that I've got run into the generator and then it plugs right into your, your main amp here to run your, your um, camper as if you were plugged up to shore power. But right now I am plugged into the 110 adapter and I've got the cord coming on over to this little port, which I installed on here. This is the pass-through extension on my cord so I can shut my um, storage bay door at night, not let bugs and cold and everything else. I probably didn't touch on it too briefly, but I installed this uh, 110 outlet right here. And how that works is that's just basically an extension cord that goes from the outside wall right to my inverter and transfers the port. And then this wire here was the old extension cord or if I need an additional extension cord, that goes right up into the, the bed area, uh, the master bedroom to get a second uh, secondary line in there if we, we need to. Um, but that, yeah, that was pretty simple to do. Just drill the hole through the wall and we have a nice uh, receptacle here, um, to, plugs into the inverter and then the Slam latches can slam shut, closed off to the weather here. And then I've got my 200 or 2000 watt um, inverter uh, set up in here. This is kind of set up so we can run, um, you know, CPAP machine, uh, TV, that kind of stuff, charger phones, uh, run a little bit more power and have some stuff, but. Uh, this is my shortcut to, instead of having the big high dollar inverters, I just have a standard 2000 watt inverter. And if I had to do it again, I'd probably go up to a 3500 watt inverter because it doesn't run my wife's coffee maker. Um, and if I think I had a bigger inverter, it would, but uh, and I'm only using the filters. We don't have water hookups here. I just use the filter mount to keep the cord up off the ground, but this works well for providing power to all the outlets inside the camper. So we're set up just like we are on shore power with the difference of we still can't run microwave and AC and that kind of stuff off the inverter, but uh, we get all our outlets. We can run TV for the kids to watch a movie, charge our phones, run a CPAP machine, you know, nebulizer, any device that you might need to have. And to make sure that I don't have the circulation, so obviously I'm hooked into the shore power port so that will tie your power into your um, converter and your fuse panel your converter is then trying to charge your batteries so you have a parasitic draw on your batteries that way um, i'll show you what i did to be able to shut off the charging converter uh, when we're set up on the inverter that's not it's a flip of a switch a couple switches here to get this switched over from the generator to the inverter but for weekend warrior full-time deal it's really not that bad of a setup it's uh, nice and convenient so on the fuse panel side when switching between the generator and the inverter I had to make a modification to our fuse panel where the receptacles and the converter were on the same same fuse I was able to match up the uh, fuse block 
and separate there was actually two wires going into one port which i don't really like either but um uh, the way they had it set up from the factory i was able to separate find out which uh, wire went to the converter separated out the receptacles from the converter and right now my fuse is or yeah the fuse is off um, because we're running on the inverter setting um, set up so converter's not running so that stops that parasitic loop from going from the battery through the inverter and then back to the battery via the um, converter and it will actually throw an error on the inverter. The inverter will stop, which is kind of nice. Uh, but then when I switch from the inverter back to the generator or shore power, I just come and flip the switch back and then the converter um, works again and then the generator or shore power will, will charge the batteries back up. So that's all the, uh, it was a pretty simple move. Um, just had to break out the plastic around here uh, by the fuse block and then um, add that in there, separate out the wires, and to be able to set that up. Pretty simple. So these are our solutions for um, hauling water. This campground does have access to potable water, so we've got a five gallon bucket for hauling water down for the um, fire um, suppression. Um, I use a collapsible bucket to take out of the five gallon to control, so I'm not dumping a full five gallons in the fire pit. Um, one, two, two and a half, and then I've got my five gallon can, or looks like it's actually a six gallon can with a spout. So if I need to add more water to the fresh water tank, I can add that um, with having the spout. So that's how we manage the fresh water system if we need more water. So that's our setup for camping out here in the rustic nature national parks where you don't have power, don't have water. Um, we filled the tanks up before we left home and we seem to be conserving pretty well where I won't have to haul water um, in jugs and, and top off the tanks. Um, 12 volt runs the water pumps just fine. We have plenty of hot water propane. Um, we're only running the two 20 pound propane tanks and that seems to keep uh, any hot water and the refrigerator cold. So, um, But we really like this area. Um, that's our campsite we really like that uh, like I mentioned we really like our setup with the uh, camp chef two burner stove the Dutch oven we're getting I'm getting better at that and then I showed you the uh, the power inverter if you got any questions leave those in the comments below thank you for watching and enjoy camping